Okay, so we're live here. And uh, interestingly enough, let's see. Yeah, good. I'm looking at all my meters here. So if you can throw a little comment in there, it's really helpful. I'm live on Facebook. We're live on in two Facebook groups, and we're live on YouTube all at once. We're simulcasting this here. And so sometimes I don't know. So, so yeah, if you see something, say something. Hey, Stuart, good to see you there. So here's what's happening. Uh, tomorrow, if you're watching this in real time live, tomorrow Scott Brick is on with Johnny Heller and I on Ask Us Anything. So that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, obviously, these two guys are amazing in terms of the number of books they've done, how long they've been in the industry, the insights that they have. So be sure to join us there for that. If you don't know about it, send me a message, find me someplace, and let me get you the information on that. It's in all the, it's in the narration groups. It's already posted there with the link. Okay, so be sure to join us. Now, if you're watching this afterward, uh, so the replay is still available at the same link. So be sure to check that out tomorrow. That should be an amazing show. Brick has done uh, close to, I, I think, a thousand audiobooks. So has Hitler. And there just aren't that many people that have done that much. Uh, but there are a few. And uh, they're on and they're talking about where they see the industry. So check that out. So we're going to talk about punch and roll today. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting. There's the, This started with a conversation with Keith yesterday uh, in the ACX narrators group. And he was saying, you know, I'm not sure about punch and roll. And uh, I might just be better off going back to doing something. He's using Reaper. I'm using Studio One. doesn't matter. It wasn't the, an issue of the DAW specifically. It was what shortcuts and all the extra steps that he was taking to do it. And one of the things that comes up over and over and over and over again is this situation where punch and roll. And so uh, my gas station has pizza. Is it good pizza? I, I'll just say no. All right. It's not. But it's pizza. And sometimes you, you get into these long discussions with people about, I'm doing punch and roll, and I hate it, or I love it, or whatever. And then you find out the tools they're using. It would be like, when I was a young guy, I, I grew up in Detroit. So my concept of Mexican food, I live in Southern California now. I've had some awesome, awesome, awesome food here. Um, but as a young guy, my, my concept of Mexican food meant going to Taco Bell. And so I could tell people when I was young, yeah, I've had Mexican. <laughs> I I say that around here and people would shoot me, kind of. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, uh, no, they'll shoot me for other reasons too. Anyway, point being, just because a tool does punch and roll doesn't mean it do, does it well. Just because you have a tool that could do punch and roll well means that somebody's taking the most advantage of it. So forever, I'm, t so the gentleman I talked to today, he's reworking all his, all his, uh, uh shortcuts and getting his set up so that he can have effective punch and roll. And he was doing it in a way that there was the there were these extra baby steps. And so we're going to talk about it today. If you have a comment or a question, be sure to throw them in the chat. I'll, I'll check in at different points to see what's going on in the chat. It's uh, also helpful helpful uh, if you're on the YouTube one. Yeah, go ahead and, and say something there. And so I'm looking for comments and all that kind of stuff. So anytime you see me looking away from your from you, I'm looking for comments just to see what's going on there. And uh, I don't even see the comments there. Ah, there we go. No comments on that one. And then I'll check this other one here. And then we're off and we're rock and roll. We're making it happen. And all right, good. All right, Benjamin, I see you there. Yeah, anyway, not all Mexican food is the same. Not all Chinese food is the same. I mean, yeah, we've all had Mexican, but Taco Bell ain't Mexican, okay? <laughs> I'll just say it. Ah, that's what happens when you live in Southern California. You learn, oh, that's really good stuff. Our neighbors make tamales by, yeah, by hand from scratch. I mean, great stuff, great stuff. So anyways, I've had some great food now that I'm an adult. Oh, as a young guy. <laughs> I had no concept. And so this long thread, there's 80 people that have contributed to it. And I just said, all right, instead, I'm just going to show some things. And I can't show everything. I can't show all the goodness. But what I want you to do is have, a, have some awareness. And then some of the trouble points... I've seen people, and they're like ex-smokers. That's why you see this. People that have used Audacity for years and didn't do punch and roll, and we, we used to use Audacity. And then you get into good punch and roll, and you use it for a few months. You just can't go back, and I'll show you why. So I'll give you a couple examples. I have a little script here. I'll read it, and uh, I'll hack it, meaning I will make some mistakes so that we can see that. And then we can talk about some of the good, the bad, and uh, the indifferent that comes up for this. So number one. My focus is the performance. Now, I'm, uh, today I'm multitasking. I'm watching, monitoring multiple screens, 
and I'm doing so I can do a horrible job. It's uh, pretty well. I can mess some things up pretty well because I'm watching things. I'm looking at my notes. I'm looking at my screens to make sure you can hear me and it's showing me that you can see me and that kind of stuff. So this is a perfect case for me to do punch and roll because I can mess it up and I can mess it up without having to do all this multitasking stuff. But the point of doing good punch and roll is kind of twofold. Number one is to get your, your focus off of the tools and, and get it to where you're thinking about the performance and that's your major focus. Number two is to get your work out the door sooner. The time to market is a huge win for you in this business. People don't understand. There are competitors out there. If it takes, if so, you and me are competing for the same job. Isn't going to happen, but just pretend, work with me on that. And pretend we're roughly the same in terms of ability to be emotional and a good actor and that kind of thing. Chances are you're better than I am about that, but pretend we're the same. Well, let's say your work comes in, so you're, that they assign you a book and they assign me a book. I'm a little bit more. It takes me a little longer because I do more editing. I spend more time. I just end up doing things that take me more time. What's going to happen if your work comes in two weeks earlier than mine comes in, and then you do that consistently over two or three books? Well, when the publisher has a choice, they're going to go with you because if our, if our overall quality was matching in terms of, yeah, they like some things better with me, some things better with you, they go back and forth. But, but they notice that you are consistently early. Johnny Heller's a terror. He's always early on his projects. Number two, you know, it's a, it's, it's a way to be more competitive. And one of my jobs is to help people get the tech out of the way so that they can win more jobs and, more importantly, they can get the better paying jobs and they, they can get their work in that is great quality with less effort on their part so that it's done, out the door. Go play pickleball. Go play with your kids. Go walk your dog. Hey, we all have a life here, okay? Or some of us pretend you know, sometimes I don't, well, I wonder about that. So here's punch and roll. And then I'm just going to do some, show you some things. People ask, well, what's it? Why do you need segments? I have, I wrote down most of the questions, but the idea is, well, oh, and then here's, here's like, here's a tip. I see people that are going back and forth between doing punch and roll and not doing punch and roll based on, well, I'm doing a short one. I'm not doing punch and roll. You know, when you do it a hundred percent of the time, you get darn good at it. I tell people, don't go back and forth. That's It's not saving you time because the extra reps you get, even doing it on a 30-second, a 60-second, when you need something different, will give you experience that will pay off when you're doing long form. If you're doing long form, it'll pay off when you're doing short form. My son's done like 14,000 voiceovers, and it doesn't matter if he's doing a 30-second or a 30-minute spot or something that's longer. He's always doing punch and roll. Man, he's a terror at it. I've never seen anybody complete so much work in such a short period of time, but he always does the same thing. And he's not worried about making a decision. Do I punch and roll on this one? And people complain, yeah, I got to wait four seconds. If you ever edit something, it takes more than four seconds if you're going to listen to it at all. Now, some people cheat and don't listen to anything, but watch this. All right. So I'm going to read something here, hack it up, and then we'll, I'll take questions and comments and those kind of things. Um, and then, oh, oh and, and Benjamin threw a comment in. Uh, does Scott still use a dog clicker? We'll ask him. But the thing is, is here's the thing. you I ain't Scott Brick. Scott Brick could, could record into a cassette recorder, his iPhone. And Scott Brick, after you do, when, when you and I have done 800, 900, 1,000 books and have a following, we, he can record on almost anything and they'll take it. And their engineers will deal with it. That's a different thing. Someone that started 10 or 15 years ago does not have the same competitive pressures that you and I have to get work out the door and have a publisher, you know, want us for another book. Scott Brick doesn't need, I mean, so it's the same with Heller. Heller, you know, Heller does punch and roll. Heller uses Studio One, whatever. Uh, Sean Pratt uses Studio One. Sean, they don't use the dog clickers. They do punch and roll. Um, that doesn't mean all people that have been around for 10 or 15 years and did this when they went into a studio, they get a pass. When, when I was an exceptionally pretty young girl, no, when I was exceptionally pretty, the highway patrol might not give me a ticket. I have a daughter who didn't get a ticket one time, and I just thought, cool, whatever. You know, the, 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 the highway patrol didn't give her a ticket, and I suspect some of it just had to do with how old she is and the way she... <clears throat> happens to look, which is not like me. <laughs> Big upgrade. All right.
enough of that. Anyways, uh, I all say life isn't always fair and it always isn't the same for Scott Brick or me in terms of what I have to do. Scott Brick's probably bringing in all his books early as well, just like Heller. Scott Brick has such relationships built up over so many years. I really guarantee it. He could cold read. He could do it however he wants to do it. Nobody's going to say anything to him, and they're going to hire him again. He's just been doing it long enough. All right, here's punch and roll. I press R. I'm going to read a little script here. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm learning pickleball, and I'm worried about my uh, electrolytes, and so I'm reading an advertisement from L. M N T. Let me see if I can get. It. Yeah, L M N T. Okay, my little. I just got a. I just. I got some. Some here today, and I saw this. I thought, oh, this would be good for eat, because this will. This will excite you. Wait till you hear the emotion in this one. Let me turn this on here. Right here. I press. So I have it set up. I press R. What does R stand for? Record or grr. I'm a pirate. R. And I, that's what I use for record. You can use anything you want. Have something that's memorable, but I always do the same thing. So, oh, I'm over there. Jeez, let me set this up. I'm at the beginning. I press R. <clears throat> now that's terrible, okay? Yeah, I'm supposed to do that before I start. So here I have a shortcut key. I press C, goes back to the beginning. I'll press the shortcut key again. And so this is the thing. The good software allows you to have shortcuts. So, hey, I needed to clear my throat. And, of course, I figured that out right after I press R. So I'm going to get rid of that. Electrolytes particularly sodium and potassium, are the driving force behind energy production in our cells, nerves, and muscles. But many of us have yet to unlock their full benefits. A growing body of research reveals that optimum health outcomes occur at sodium levels two to three times government recommendations. Wow, holy crap, wow, that's a, um, see, I messed that up. All right, I don't think that wasn't in the script. But here's the thing with punch and roll. Do I really care? No, I mean, could I record if, now, by the way, for someone that's not doing punch and roll because it's a short one, they can say, well, I'm just going to go back and re-record the whole thing if I make a mistake at the 23-second mark. Of course you can do that. You could do that. You could record on a cassette recorder and do that as well. I don't recommend that. I'm going to go right here. By the way, I'll switch it to a dark color. When I'm doing demos, I really should have set it up as dark. just makes it easier for you to see where my cursor is. And now I have my pre-roll set up at four seconds. And I don't even know where I am in my script, so I may have to do this more than once. So I'm going to press R. It's going to go back four seconds because that's how mine is configured. You could do three seconds, two seconds, six seconds, whatever. That's not the point. I'm going to then read along, and I'm going to ignore the recorder. I don't care. It's going to do its job. You see right now I'm at 22 seconds. Oh, let me show up another little display here. I'm going to... I'm, I don't have this up normally. I just have it up so you can see that my cursor is at 22 seconds. Wherever the cursor is, yeah, that's going to be showing there. And I'm going to go ahead and press R, and then you'll see it'll go back. Oh, it's just, I'll do this math in my head. It's set to go back four seconds. It's 18.061. All right. All right. Now let's figure this out. And then I'm going to press R. At sodium levels, two to three times government recommendations. Ah, crap. I don't know where I am in the script. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this again. At sodium levels, two to three, three times, times government recommendations. recommendations. That's why we say more salt, not less. So here's what I did. This is one of the little keys that not enough people do. And I have my monitors turned down. I, I'll turn them up just a little bit here on my end. That'll make life easier. I'd normally have them turned up. I normally am recording with monitors. I don't wear headphones when I record. That's a whole other discussion we can talk about another time. But here's the thing. My goal is to have this little spot here. If I'm doing it right, I'm reading along with myself. Now, I can't read along with you. you there's just no way. Uh, I could if I rehearsed it enough times. I might do it 200 times, and then I can read along like you do. But what you can do and what I can do is read along with ourselves. And what, here's what happens. During this preview here, I am going to be reading my script. Normally, I have it on my screen. I just, found, I just happen to have this. And... I'm going to read along with it and pay no attention to where the recorder turns on because it turned on right where I told it to turn on. I'm going to do that again. And by the way, when I do well, let me play this for you. Let me see if I have this turned up enough. I just changed my, uh, uh, let's see if this works here. At sodium levels, two to three times government recommendations. That's why we say more salt, not less. Okay, now, you know what, I'll bet. Almost nobody could hear that I that I did that because if I'm talking along with myself and I'm hearing myself and I'm not talking to you and I'm paying attention to the feel, 
the tempo, the, 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 then if there was a little breath in here, and let's see if there's a little breath. I'm going to zoom in here. Is there a breath? Ah, look at that, a little breath. <gasps> okay, there was a breath. It's so small that it's, it's, it's practically invisible, and that's fine. And so now here's a couple things about good quality punch and roll where the tools make a difference. Number one, I could go back here and punch in and it will not blow away the rest of this track. It allow, I could do that. Number two, if I had come in in the middle of a breath, I can go to this little seam right here. You see this little seam here? I'll change the color again. I wanna see what happens. Ah, bright now, look at I have this seam right here. And I can go with that little seam. I'm gonna, let me zoom in on that, okay? So I have a seam. I actually have behind the scenes, I can go back a couple seconds or go forward. Here's my old audio, by the way. It's still there. It's just underneath the new audio. It's almost like they put a piece of paper right over the old audio. And now I have both the no old audio and the new audio are both there. And behind the scenes, it's all there anyway because this is all non-destructive. So what happens? I have the original audio and the old audio, and if I happen to have come in in the middle of a breath, I almost never do anymore, then I could adjust this seam point. And what's even more amazing about that is if I save this and I go ahead and I close it, and then I go ahead and open it again, what's going to happen is when I come in a day later, a week later, a month later, remember, I mean, I have no, I can't undo because I just closed this file. I can now adjust where that punch point is because it's non-destructive. And so behind the scenes, it has the old audio that I did the first time. It has the new audio right on top of it that's sitting right here. And I don't have to worry about it. I can adjust that. Now, my goal is to never adjust that, but I can adjust it. And because of the way this works, I just have so many options for making it simple. Make it, and if I came in and, and, and my punch and roll was the next day, and by the way, some of you will know this, I'm not on caffeine right now. <laughs> Just me being excited about life. But some mornings I'm on caffeine. I drink coffee in the morning. I always have one cup of coffee in the morning. I shouldn't say always. 90% of the time I'll have coffee, cold brew. And uh, I could just drag this up and, and bring up the volume, drag it down and change it. So if I wasn't at the exact same volume I was at yesterday, cool. I can go ahead and just change it by dragging and dropping. I can make duplicates by holding down a key and drag it down. Now I have a duplicate and I could, I could experiment with this one down here, including doing other things, but I'm not showing off all that kind of stuff. One of the things that happens is when you have great punch and roll, you have so many little options for doing things, drag and drop, that you don't have to deal with. And because I'm going to do it all the time, so I got to the end here, there's more of my script that I need to read because 26 seconds isn't enough. So I'm going to take right here, Press R again, it's gonna go back. That's why we say more salt, not less. So, yeah, I still, and I, uh, and I had this other one active. Let me activate this one, see that? Oh, terrible, I made a mistake. Actually, I did a demo earlier. This software can be set up which whatever track I, I uh, click on is the active track. And that's because I was doing something where someone needed that behavior and let me get rid of this track for right now. And then what I'm going to do is go uncheck that little checkbox right there. And because that was the case where somebody needed to decide which track. Here's another thing about the better uh, punch and roll software. I can record in the middle of this track. I can record on a, on a track below. That gives me options. By default right now, I just wanna record at the end, but I could also record right here. I'll show you that in a minute. But now I'm gonna go to the end and I'm gonna do this, press R again. Yes. That's why we say more salt, not less. Yeah, see it's recording in the right spot, but you know, I'm not obviously reading the script. So I'm going to do that now. I'm gonna press one key. It's gonna take out this take. I call this my crap key. Ah, crap, I don't like this take. One key, it will go back and it'll start again. Yes. That's why we say more salt, not less. Optimal hydration doesn't just mean more fluids. It means getting the right electrolyte balance and all sorts of other stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna pretend that I read the script there. Now, what you can see is if I do that right, this timing is gonna come out perfect. And one of the things as a musician and a drummer that I know, timing makes a big difference in the overall feel. And then there's one other little rule. So the person I worked with, Keith, I was working with earlier was you know with punch and roll, trying to figure out, well, where should I punch in? 
And should I punch in right here in this tiny little space here? Or should I be here? Or should I be here? You know what? I do it phrase by phrase. So what does that mean? I don't try to Franken build a single phrase. Like I take the first part of it and then I'll say it three times. And then I go, well, I like the way I said the second half. First off, what's the maximum time for a phrase? Most phrases, and I'll just tell you this because I've, I've checked it out. Your average phrase is four to six seconds. Why? Well, I have this really crappy habit. I breathe. And so does everybody else. And so when you breathe, you breathe every four to six seconds. And what happens? Nobody thinks about it. But if you start going ahead and analyzing a chapter that you've done, and I've done this before, you'll see somewhere between four to six, four to six seconds is the norm when people are doing recording or talking or both. And uh, I'm in fact, I, I, I breathe even when I'm not recording. All right. I just, just a habit that I developed over the years. I'm still doing it. And what that means is my liability and decision point. If I stop here and I don't like anything about this, if I look at this screen, there's only two places that I'm going to punch in. I'm going to go right here. This happened to be a breath point here. Let's see if I have a breath in there. It's a little breath. Okay. It's a, it, by the way, if you zoom in enough on anything, you can see other stuff. And uh, there's a breath point here. I'm going to go to one of those two spots, and that's where I'm going to, to go in order to do this. So I think I recorded. I'm going to try this again. And I do the same thing every time. I do it 100 times. And if I'm not talking to you, I wouldn't sit here and explain stuff. I just go click, go, click, go. And you get hyper fast at it. You cannot believe how fast because I'm not. I'm always trying to be a couple inches away. I'm always going to do the same thing. And if you always do it the same, I totally disagree with the people who say, well, I'll punch and roll sometimes. Don't punch and roll. Don't, nope, nope. Just always do it the same thing. I press R. Optimal hydration doesn't just mean more, more fluids. fluids. It means getting, and see, I wasn't totally on there. Let me do that again. Press C. Optimal hydration doesn't, doesn't just mean, mean more fluids. I don't like the way I said that. Optimal hydration doesn't, doesn't just mean, mean more, more fluids. fluids. It means getting the right electrolyte balance. Dilute the balance and fatigue follows. You feel the difference when you get it right. Okay, so get it right. All right, there's my advertisement for uh, LMNT. Yeah. And the reason I brought it down to my desk was because they have a little offer here. Buy three boxes, get a bonus box. And I was thinking, hey, I should check that out. That's really why, how it ended up on my desk. And um, and by the way, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like I'm I'm uh, I clip there. I didn't really. I just had it zoomed in visually so that I'm now going to put it back. Now you can see this. And then, you know, I just want you to see punch and roll is easy. What do you do? You go back to the last phrase point. There's not a big decision. You go to the last phrase point. You do not try to go back and build because if i wanted to just replace the word in the middle of his, of this uh, phrase i can do that i've done it i've pulled an s out of something and put it on the end of another word but you know what i want to be a great performer what do great performers have to do they have to do the they, they have to perform a lot and i've made a decision in my life there is no six second phrase that i can't say over again and hit, still hit the performance i might and and you know, nobody else really cares. But the reality is I want to have a great performance. And if it's not good enough, I might need to say it three or four times. So I have looped over and I have done this. Uh, I'm just going to do this right here. I've done this 40 times, 100 times, 600 times, 2,000 times. I don't know what it is. And fatigue follows. You feel the difference when you get it right. And crap. I don't like this performance. And fatigue follows. You feel the difference when you get it right. And, I mean, and then, you know, in other words, I get this wrong, I get this wrong, this next line, whatever it is, and I just go, ah, oh, crap. And, and fatigue I do it again. follows. You feel the difference when you get it right. So be sure you get it right. All right. All right. That's not what it says, but I'm going to pretend. And sometimes I loop over the same thing three or four or five times if I need to. Hope And I hope it doesn't take me six or eight takes, whatever. It doesn't matter. But then I have other things if I'm using one of the more advanced punch and roll tools. If I kind of thought in the back of my mind, I need to review this later, make sure it's right. I can right click on it. I can change its color to something else. Let me change it to something that's really obvious. So I'll go purple. And then I can give myself a note. Note to self, hey, get better. Get better. All right, that's a note that I give myself all the time. Or practice more. Or learn more. Or be better. 
but whatever i can see that and then even if i'm i'm uh, uh, zoomed in i can zoom in and i still can see that little thing and it just tells me hey i need to go back to that and then watch this now i'm going to do something this is my generic template i'm going to choose two clicks here's this here's this and i'm going to choose okay and then it's going to come out and guess what's going to happen here's this file here i want you to visually see let me change the color so that we can talk about it change change this one to a different color and we'll go what color i'm gonna go with blue we'll go blue let's go light blue all right there it is that's not a blue green i don't know what that is teal maybe no one's calling me for color choices or anything versus yellow and now let's get rid of this thing and let's just get them all the same size so we can see it what you're going to notice here is that on that export i have audio that is mastered and i've done that by simply exporting all my tools are there and that looks a little that looks a little too quiet to me and i'll bet you i'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that in rx and i'm gonna measure it there and in rx what does it say this is punch and roll yep 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 it says it says at minus 2390 okay so it's too quiet so watch this with one i use my generic template i'm going to take this track here i'm going to delete it i'll take this and i'm going to go into a spot that i know about it's a secret and there's one knob and i'm gonna put the one knob up to where it really should have been to begin with it was at six i'm gonna put it at eight and a half and then here's what happens once i get it set up for me instead of using my generic template then I go ahead and I just simply export and I will hit the specs all day long and I want it to think about it. I'm going to go straight to uh, RX here and there I'm at 22. Still too quiet for me, but it does hit the specs. And I just happen to know, oh, by the way, it, what, what's not obvious, I changed out my interface today because I, I wanted to test a different interface. And I did that, and uh, so I, I didn't turn the volume up to the same level I had it on my previous one, but I was working on some other stuff. Matter of fact, that show I'm doing tomorrow, I was testing a new way to handle audio when I have multiple people coming in from different parts of the country. And because of that, I, I'm, I'm just a little quieter. But, you know, do I really care? I don't, because once I have my template set up, I still hit the, the specs. It's just quieter than I would like. And so once I know my little number, I call it my toaster knob number, and then what will happen is every time I export, it will come out and hit ACX specs and be fully mastered. And the cool thing about that is I don't have to think about it. I can get these things working every day. So let's put this to 10. I'm going to actually go to 11 on that. And that's just because I recorded quieter because I hadn't turned up this new interface to the same level as my previous. And I have a generic template that I happen to pull up just to do this. And now watch this. One click, two clicks, three clicks, and this will come up. And once I have it, I can now record. And when that's set up properly, here's the new one. Uh, I just hit that 20.5, 3.4 for the sample peaks, 20, and I don't have to think about it. Okay, that's the beauty of having one of the more advanced DAWs. The tools are there; they're sitting in the background. But we're talking about punch and roll today, and later. You will find that uh, we some we had a discussion in the group, one of the groups. Hey, I've got all these little segments. I don't like these little segments. They're actually good for you because I can go back later if I find something during the edit process. I have a click at this point. I don't have a click at this point. I can go back in. And if somebody wanted to consolidate it all down to one, that's easy too. One click, two clicks, and I have a complete copy. This is what I do. I sometimes will have a complete copy and I'll just mute it and I'm going to let it sit there. And then I'll work on this other copy because what's my liability? Let's say I, I, I had missed a line and I wanted to go ahead. And if you have your shortcuts set up right, if you have your tools set up right, I can go ahead and I'm going to now record on this second track. Let me make it a different color just so we're, we can talk about it. All right, red. But many of us have yet to unlock their full benefits. And I didn't grab the script, so I'd be wrong here and I'd have to redo it, but watch this. All I'm going to do is click once. And now what it did was it inserted that right here and it uh, moved everything else over. So if I had missed the line, I could add it in there. Now, I don't usually do it that way. I would oft often record on that other track and then I might want to put it in. But see, if I had recorded on this track, why, this is how hard it is to insert something when you have the, the more advanced tools. I drag it up, drop it, and it moved everything over for me, okay? So some of these things, you can do this in the more advanced DAWs and you make your life easier. But at the end of the day, 
punch and roll means that when I'm done, I have no editing to do if I'm doing it well. And I have so many people that are doing it well that they're not going through and having to edit it. You should not have to edit the timing in between. You should not have to take out outtakes. And net, while it seems faster to go to, let me read a line here, um, a growing body of research reveals that optimal, a growing body of research reveals that op, a growing body of research. Now, I just read that three ways. And here's the thing. You can go ahead and say, oh, I liked I liked line number three better than I liked line number two. And that might be valid. I mean, it could be totally true. But the question is, does that line number two, for example, fit perfectly and sound natural with the line that happened to be in the script before? If I say the same thing slightly different three times, sometimes it's a perfect match against what was earlier. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes the timing between them is not the same, especially as I say it two or three times. It can be a little faster, a little more laid back, depends on the lines, depends on what's going on. Some people will get that better than others. But I'll tell you what, there is a difference when you are reading along with yourself and keep on going and are totally ignoring the tech versus somebody that's doing three or four. And when they get past three, it rarely matches very well. I, it, you know, it's, well, I can hear it anyway. Not everybody hears everything, that's fine. Many rights holders, people get away with all sorts of stuff with, in terms of noise, in terms of uh, performance, and that's just life in this, it, the, the way we do things here, so that's cool. So what I'm gonna do, let me look for uh, questions and comments here from the groups and see if anybody has one that I can answer, okay? Uh, none there, all right. Lisa Vega, press out to record, space bar to stop. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, wow, Lisa, so cool. Um, da, 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 da. let's see, I'm going to have, hello, hello, Lisa. Yes, just R to record. If you make a mistake, it's a C key. Then um, space bar to stop. You know, and every time, every, so I should say this. I press R 90% of the time. Because R, if I'm going to reset this thing, I'm going to go back up to the top. By the way, when I have extra tracks, people that have the simple DAWs that only have one track, Here's what we do for the, you take the track you're working on, you make it big, you make the other one small. Here's how the way I record all day long. When I'm just starting off, meaning that I'm not in the record mode, I press R. It's when you get it right, right. electrolyte So be sure you get it right. And then you carry on here and I gotta add an extra track there. So we're gonna record, record, record. And then if I made a mistake because I was talking to you, and then I press C while it's in this record mode. See how fluorescent it is? When you get it right. That will allow So be sure you get it right. That takes out the previous one, that puts the cursor back to the spot, then allows me to keep on going. And because I wasn't I was talking over this, I would always it's press when you C. get it right. So be sure you get it right. And then I would keep on right here and and what's when I'm doing that right, when you're doing that right, when we're doing it right. This timing here is just normal because I was already talking and I just kept on talking. So therefore, this timing is going to come out perfect. I'm not going to have to go back to edit it. When you do this over a few books, look up Maria McCann, 13 books in the first three months, 50 books in the first year. I've never seen anybody do more than she did. And part of it is she just said, all right, I'm, she took my word for it. She did punch and roll. She worked at it a little bit. And she's just a terror. She gets more done than any narrator I know, short of Heller's probably close. Uh, but it's crazy. When people are doing this right, you're doing less work. Why? Punch and roll done well eliminates your editing. You don't get done and still have another 15 minutes or three hours worth of editing. You're not consolidating tracks and trying to do all this stuff. If you make a mistake and you get good at it once you decide to do it. Don't go back and forth. If you're going to use Audacity and do it, Always punch and roll, 100% of the time. Or upgrade to one of the better DAWs that, that give you more options. And then you get fully mastered when you export, once you're set up one time. Once I have this set up, I can get mastered audio all day long, and it sounds great with the quality of the tools. Okay, let me look for other questions here. Questions, is the way to check out in studio on without going to RX? No, uh, no, but I'll tell you this, once you have it set up and you put it on your template, I'm hitting, uh, uh, Marie McCann has probably put out uh, 600 chapters and they're all right because once you have it set up right and save it to your template, 
It's always going to come. It's it, you know. First off, it's an average. A chapter is a certain length. Ch uh, uh, there's an arc to a chapter, and so when you do it right, you'll just be blown away at how consistent the whole thing works out because of the way books are written and the way a story is written. Stories always have some quiet parts and some exciting parts, and they always end up balancing themselves out because nobody can stand 100 miles an hour for the whole time for everything somebody does without getting irritated. And if it's too slow forever, that doesn't work either. So no, it doesn't, but you don't need to. And once you're set up properly, it doesn't matter. And you definitely want to have RX. And you can get more done in a day if you'll use RX and use its batch processing rather than put it in your DAW. It, there's just there's there's more advanced tools, uh, spectral denoise if you need that. There's a whole bunch of reasons where you're better off using batches because what happens? You can while that batch is running in the background, you can be recording the next chapter. If you put those tools in your DAW, you have this other thing going on, and uh, yeah, that's all another discussion there. Let me go look at the other things here. And dun, 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 Lisa, John, Stuart, I found my work to be so much faster, more consistent since uh, tools and methods in S1. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not just S1, but S1 is one of the best ones, okay, and has huge community support. But you can do this in Reaper, too. I, it'd be, those two are much better. Audition has a punch and roll, but they put it on at the end, and there's a bunch of little quirks with it, and it's just okay. Uh, Audacity, Twisted Wave, half-baked versions of of, of punch and roll because they put it on at the very end and that's why if you go into audacity and you know how I did that little insert thing over here where I put a little insert in I added it in the middle it blows the way the, it blows away the rest of the track you can't do certain things in the DAWs and then having the ability to have multiple tracks is a huge win when you're especially for people doing audiobooks because hey if I want to experiment with something one click two clicks I have a complete copy and with that copy, I can go ahead and change its color, do whatever. But that's not what I, why I usually do it. But I can go ahead and keep this and eliminate liability because I have a perfect copy. And if I do something wrong, because of this DAW's non-destructive, I could go ahead and get it all back. But I don't need to. And then there's other stupid things that nobody will find sexy. Uh, but they sure love it when it comes up later. We've been sitting here talking and I'm paying no attention and I haven't saved it, but it's, say, it's doing auto saves for me every five minutes or so, so that even though I wasn't paying attention, if I wanted to and I didn't save, I could go back and, and get work if my machine crashed, if there was a power outage, one thing. Nobody pays any attention to any of that stuff until it happens to them, and if you do it long enough, stuff happens. All right, let me look for other comments. Um, dun 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 -dun. All right, and RX is a big win. Let me go check here. Comments over here. No, why is that not showing me comments? Hold on, I have to figure this out. I have to figure this out. It is not showing me comments in this, but they're there. I can tell there's comments. So let me go ahead and figure out why it's not telling me. It's because I'll pop out. Did that? Will that get me comments? All right, Candy. What do you feel like? Oh. What if you feel like you mess up every other line? Well, that's all the more reason. So Candy asked in one of the Facebook groups, what if you feel like you mess up every other line? And that's exactly why I do punch and roll. I, listen, I've, 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 <laughs> I've uh, engineered for some of the biggest narrators in the world. And one of the things I can tell you, they have days where they're just off the charts amazing as to how far they can read before they make an error. But then what happens is these people sometimes she goes out, she doesn't get as much sleep. She doesn't eat as well as she should. Sometimes he's doing something else. He has pressure. They, they have their whole life going on, a problem with their car, whatever. They're under deadline. Some publishers said, hey, 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 can you get this done faster? And they're thinking, oh, man, I already planned it one way. And they, yeah, I'll get it faster. The more mistakes you make, the more punch and roll works for you. You don't avoid punch and roll because you make more mistakes. You use punch and roll because you make more mistakes or less mistakes. It doesn't really matter. It's faster either way. And since you get so fast at doing it when you do it all the time, I don't even worry about it. It shouldn't be a stress point. Eh, who cares how many mistakes I make? And here's what I've seen from some of the best narrators in the world. Some days they'll have big chunks like this that are that are a long chunk. And, and they're instead, this, I only did 20 seconds. I've seen him do two minutes. I've seen him do five minutes. But then that same person 
later in a chapter will get into something that, that for whatever reason trips them up. And then they'll have a whole bunch of segments that are 10 seconds, 15 seconds, six seconds, 35 seconds. I mean, and then all of a sudden there's a, there's a whole bunch of little ones in there too. So, and that was only when I was getting the, you know, something I just, the high profile people send you their 100% raw stuff. They just send you the, the, the whole file. Don't, don't send me a, they don't export it sometimes, especially in the old days. So I would see exactly what they were doing, how many punch-ins they had. Some days it was a lot, some days it isn't. Who cares? When you have this stuff down, you really don't care. That becomes a very low stress point. So don't think that, uh, uh, and once you bounce and the seams go away, it's a way to find those spots again. Yeah, you can rebuild it, but boy, was that a pain. And so, so Rebecca asked, once you bounce the file, by the way, so I can, I, first off, if I'm going to bounce this, what I do is I go ahead and do that right click and duplicate track and I get a complete copy and then I'll bounce this track. So now this one's all one segment. Now, by the way, those are still visual things only. It doesn't hurt to have them in there. And I, I guarantee you if, you, if you're in this business long enough, these punch points will come back in your favor. Now I can undo until I close this. Once I close it, I lose it. So what I do, that's why I create this little copy here and sometimes I have it really small or I right click on it and I'll hide it. All the good dolls allow you to hide tracks and unhide them. To unhide them, it's two clicks. One click, two click, it's back, okay? So it does take a couple clicks to get it back, but you can hide things and show them. And I just mute them and hide them. And then I have an easy way back as because I make more mistakes than most people. That's part of the reason I ended up getting into punch and roll and then checking out the more advanced DAWs. The more mistakes you make, the more this stuff really works. Uh, let me check. I'm going to do this. All right, there's that one. And then um, dog clicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and and um, and refresh this other one. I sometimes have to refresh to get. Okay, so that one's good. And here's the thing. You still will see your 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 person that has been around five years, ten years. Then they they can be doing anything. And they're very good at it because they've done that same thing. And I have seen people succeed with the dog clicker. Don't think it can't be done. They're just doing more work. And But they've gotten good at it, and they're comfortable with it because that's what they've always done. So you can do it. If somebody's newer, if you've been doing this less than two years, do punch and roll. You will save yourself a ton of grief. And once you make the decision to transfer, I have people that transfer in a weekend. And once they've done one book, they get all their time back because they're not editing. It's really mostly a mindset. And then having good tools does make it easier, okay? So let me check one last time. Um, and Steve, I always use RX as a standalone. I don't use it as, I mean, I have it in as a plugin. I can go in and use it, but I don't because you have, because every plugin has a latency. That means when I press play, then the DAW has to compensate for whatever latency on what the plugin is. Now, sometimes it's just milliseconds. I mean, a small number of milliseconds. Depending on what you use, it can be a lot. And I just don't do it. Plus, if, you, if you're if you using RX and you know about the batch processing, this batch processor is one of the best productivity tools you could ever find. And if, if people really understood the value of this and how much more they could get done in a day by using the batch processor, they wouldn't put that. They're, they're like, oh, I have to export a WAV file. Yes, you do. But I export a WAV file and throw it in here. And then while it's doing its job, I can do other things. So um, can you do it? Yes, you can do them with all plugins. Okay. And if you have a super fast machine, it does seem like it's pretty fast, but it's not as fast as just exporting a WAV and then letting the batches do it, especially the more you do. Okay. So you can do that. I just don't. And you guys are talking about the course, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic one. I'm, I'm looking at questions here. I'm trying to refresh just to make sure that I didn't miss anything there. And I think I've got it there in uh, YouTube, and I'm looking on Facebook and just making sure I have them all there. But look, if you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have, uh, you know, a concern, then be sure to get a hold of me, okay? I'll, I'll answer, you know, and maybe, and if you have a different case, and if you want to do a, an A-B with what your current solution is, hey, hit me up, okay? Uh, the thing is, is that I've just watched, so here's the thing that I feel bad about. I don't feel bad, I, I, but I'll just acknowledge it. 
I have watched over the last 10 years thousands of people get into this business and be gone in two years. And I kind of know why. I actually do know why. They were not getting enough return compared to the amount of effort they were putting in. And sometimes I talk to them, it's like, man, you're doing everything the hard way. And they didn't invest in they didn't invest in the tools. They were just doing and they didn't invest in their own learning so that they're getting better. And they didn't do their performance. I mean, there's about three or four things. And they just kind of said, well, I'm going to wing it and do it my way. And it's like, cool, you might succeed doing that. But you'll also get further if you stay. Like, I totally cheated at this thing. I just stood on the shoulders of other people. I used to argue against punch and roll. So if you go into the ACX Indie Group and you go back about 10 years, you'll, you'll see me arguing with a guy named Jeffrey Caper. He was arguing that punch and roll was the way to go. And I was arguing, listen, I'm such a darn good editor that I can match anybody doing punch and roll. And I was pretty firm about it. I'm a little embarrassed about it, but uh, it's life. That's what I said, and I was wrong. Okay. Uh, now I've done it both ways. Be sure you're getting your advice from people that have been around long enough that they have a perspective. And then be careful to say, well, Scott Brick does it this way, and look how he's done. Yes, when Scott Brick started, he had an engineer running 100% of it. When he took it over himself, he did it the simplest way that he felt like doing it, he didn't want to learn anything about engineering or practicing or setting up keyboard shortcuts. And when he started at home, there were limited choices for what software he could use at that time compared to what we have today. And so those guys and gals that have been in the business and started off in studios, they do get away with some other stuff. I've sped on the freeway for a while occasionally when I was younger, and I got away with it some days. I got pulled over occasionally, but not very often. And people do succeed doing all sorts of things. So it's not like you can't succeed without punch and roll. But what I guarantee you is if you're younger in the business, not I'm old, so I'm in my 60s. But if you're newer in the business and you get good at punch and roll, you have a competitive edge. So you don't, don't, don't be bothered when somebody else doesn't believe you after you transition. If they don't believe, no problem. Okay. I like they have to compete against my clients. And my clients are winning, and I want it to stay that way. And so all the people that don't want to do it, no stress by me. We already have we have enough people that have succeeded at a high enough level, and the numbers are crazy. 300,000 chapters will go in this year doing this stuff that I'm talking about here just from me, just from my templates and stuff. So, I, I you know, do I need to convince somebody? No, but if you want to see some concrete examples, I'll pull up Audacity and we can do it there. I can pull up Reaper and we can do it there. I can pull up all these tools and show you when you compare them. Most people aren't going to do that. I'm constantly installing the latest version of all these other tools. I buy them. I pay for them. I don't use them, but I buy them and I pay for them. And I do. I, I'm in all these groups and stuff. All right. So if you have a question, you got to ask now because I'm about to go here. Let me go back to the chat stream here. Once it does it awesome, I bring it back to your other window. No, it doesn't. Uh, you have to drag it back in. Listen, dragging things in and out of your DAW, that's how hard it is. I the When I export it, it pulled up a window. So if I export from Studio One, it, it creates a window for me. I don't have to do anything. Watch this. Mark plus export. Export the whole thing. I do this. I do this. I now have a window. It pulls it up for me. I end up dragging that over and throwing that in RX. So I drag, I drop. If I had had the batch processor, I would have done that. And then when I'm done, I save it here. And then I go back all the way here and I drag her and I drop her. I use three tools. I use uh, Good DAW. I use the Finder or File Manager. And I use RX and I drag and drop between them. And once you get, I mean, you know, it's drag and drop. The big, that's how hard it is. And really, if I was in a, a RX, I would have gone here and I would have had a, and by the way, I had that track muted, so that's why it came out with nothing in it. I would have the batch processor open, so instead of dragging into it, I would have dragged right to, this is where the drag would have occurred, right to this spot here. Sometimes I'll accumulate a bunch of these and just accumulate them, and I'll get a couple chapters in here, and when I'm done, I press process. It does all of it to all the chapters at once. Sometimes I'm doing one chapter. Man, I'm, I'm a productivity nut. I don't want to waste time. I want to go play pickleball. I'm learning pickleball. I'm working on that like, like two-thirds of the country here. I have a dog. I have five kids. I want to pretend I have a life. All right? I also do a lot of this stuff. But uh, nonetheless, <laughs> I don't. 
I want to have the option. I don't mind working 12-hour days, 14-hour days, occasionally when that's necessary. I've done that my whole life. I don't care. I, want, I, I like outworking most people. I also want to work hyper smart and get done faster than you. Ah. I'm really, here's the funniest thing. I don't worry about you. I want to be faster than I was last week. And I use the tools and I try to find more better ways to use the tools to cut my workload to get done faster. And then I teach other people how to do the same thing. It's all about getting our work done quickly and having excellent audio. So the one thing in the background that we're not talking about is there are some tools on the market that, that you know sometimes I can get some speed out of and then the results are crappy. That, that, that's a non-starter for me. I want both. I want great audio and I want it fast and I'm willing to work at getting the shortcuts set up in advance. I want residual time, all right? So uh, yeah, hope that helps some people there. I see the comments there. Keep them coming. Check out the other stuff. Uh, if, if, if I miss something, do not hesitate to get a hold of me directly. And maybe I said something that rubbed you the wrong way or something. I don't that none of the stuff is personal. But I've watched so many people. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed how many people have not made it in the business after a couple of years. And sometimes I just shook my head that like that person had the potential, but they just did. It was who they were listening to. And they heard someone say, well, I succeeded without going to college. By the way, I'm a college dropout. I went to music school instead. So I'm dissing me. Um, you know, I, I've been pretty successful without it. All my kids are college grads. Do I think that college is the key to success? No, but I sure think that just because I succeeded without it, by the way, um, I was a musician when I was young. And I will just, I will, for full disclosure, some people around me did some things that I wouldn't recommend my kids do. But just because I did it and didn't die doesn't mean I recommend it to my kids. And you're the same way if you have a niece, a nephew. Just because we got away with it or somebody else, you know, so there are still best practices and there are some things that can help you. So be sure that you're paying attention to people in the groups that are seasoned, that have seen both success and failure. I love people who have made mistakes and dug themselves out of it, who have made mistakes and learned from that. And if you're making mistakes, hey, take a number, okay? I guarantee I've made more than 95% of the people in here because I've just done more and been doing this longer and worked with more people and made mistakes and gave bad advice. And today I think I give pretty good advice, but I'm always looking to make it better. So don't hesitate to get a hold of me if you're going, well, what an idiot this guy is. Maybe I need to learn something. Teach me, okay? All right, you have a fantastic one. I uh, don't see any more comments, but uh, just be sure to ask. Uh, join the Studio One group if you're not in that. If, if you're watching this on Facebook, Go watch this on YouTube, add comments in there, subscribe to the channel. I'm always posting things about voiceover. And be sure that you watch tomorrow. Scott Brick, Johnny Heller, and I are doing our weekly show here. That's on YouTube. It's in the groups. If you don't know where it is, hit me up with a message. I'll get you a link to it. But it's on Red Barnes Audio, and it's spelled funny, but whatever. Find us. These guys are great, and the replay will be available, and we'll post the replay. It's the same link, replay or not, on, on YouTube. That'll be tomorrow at 7 a.m. No, 10 a.m. Pacific, you think I'd know, and 1 p.m. Eastern. All right, happy day. We'll talk to you later. See you on the wires. Bye-bye.